for the welfare of all the beings. Peace, peace, peace be unto all. Om Radaya Kamala Madhye Raditan Nirvikalpam Sada Sada Kila Bhedati Tameka Swarubam Radaya Kamala Madhye Raditan Nirvikalpam Sada Sada Kila Bhedati Tameka Swarubam Prakriti Vikriti Shonya Nityamananda Murtim Vimala Paramahamsam Ramakrishnam Bhajama Nirupamamati Sokshma Nishprapanchaniridham Gagana Sadrashamesham Sarvabhuta Devasam Nirupamamati Sokshma Nishprapanchaniridham Gagana Sadrashamesham Sarvabhuta Devasam Triguna Rahita Dachet Brahma Ropa Varenyam Vimala Paramahamsam Ramakrishnam Bhajama Vitaritum Avati Nang Jnana Bhakti Prashanti Pranaya Galita Chetan Jeeva Dukkha Saishnum Vidaritu Mavati Nang Jnana Bhakti Prashanti Pranaya Galita Chetan Jeeva Dukkha Saishnum Dhritata Cha Samadhin Chinvayam Komalangam Vimala Paramaham Sam Ramakrishnam Bhajam Vimala Paramaham Sam Ramakrishnam let us offer our reverential salutations to Sri Ramakrishna, who is residing in our hearts, full of grace. ready to extend all help for spiritual development necessary for the spiritual aspirant. Sri Ramakrishna he is ready to bestow knowledge, love and devotion. He is completely moved by the miseries of the people. Out of infinite compassion, the Supreme Paramatma descended on this earth in the form of Sri Ramakrishna to uplift and redeem the whole humanity. Those who seek spirituality those who want real spiritual life, those who want to realize God in this very life, all are welcome. Sri Ramakrishna has come just to 
help them in their ways. Let us not be worried over the people whose mind are completely involved in the worldly activities. They will have to have lot of experiences before their mind could be turned towards God. It is not easy task. It is extremely difficult to love God. It is extremely difficult to develop devotion to God. It all depends upon how we really desire to have Him. Do we really want Him? That's a big question. Many people have received initiation, mantras from the Gurus. How many of them do really do spiritual practices with all earnestness? How many do really practice meditation every day without giving any reason? I have heard many times those who want spirituality, those who have received divine name through the teachers, even amongst them, some of them have even forgotten the mantra given by the Guru. Carelessness, extreme carelessness. So, we must know spirituality is far, far away from such type of people. Let us not judge spirituality from that standard. The standard has been given by Sri Ramakrishna. Are you ready to take the instructions of Sri Ramakrishna? So clear, vivid, thrilling and inspiring. No ambiguity. Straightforward. Are we ready to receive? Then the gates are wide open. Spirituality seems to be very difficult because we are extremely insincere. Spirituality starts on the rock foundation of sincerity. That's very important. Discipline. If you are prepared to undergo discipline, there is chance for you to realize the Supreme Lord in this very life. It is possible. So Sri Ramakrishna has given minute details of spiritual practices, how they should be done in a very systematic way. Let us not cheat ourselves by giving all sorts of nonsense reasons. Whatever may be the reasons, they are not too great when it comes to the point of practicing spirituality. We must have some kind of heroism, some kind of heroic attitude to fight the evil forces that confront our spiritual life. The more the abstractions come, the more the difficulties we face, 
we must become more and more strong the strength is in us everything that is glory is in us the supreme lord is veritably manifesting in our heart let us try to understand and do something positively let us have pragmatic approach first of all the fundamental thing in spirituality is that we should have unflinching faith that god exists really god is present if that is well established in our mind 75% of our spirituality is done let us try to believe that there is god and he is looking after us in every way he is hearing all our prayers he knows what are to be done etc we need not have to teach the lord but what should be done he knows everything let us try to be humble and develop all love and devotion to him then you will see the wonder of wonders work through sometimes difficulties come just to show the glory of god in the end how god place a very important role in the life of a devotee is simply remarkable please go through the lives of saints and sages every life is so inspiring shri ramakrishna would suggest always have some definiteness about what you do first of all we have understood that god is there he is to be realized these two are very important for your spirituality if there is any doubt regarding one of these two then no spirituality can be done so these two are very important factors to be kept in the mind very clearly then shri ramakrishna's instructions work very well he suggests to have definite attitude towards god in order to realize him in order to see him face to face as shri ramakrishna saw divine mother kali face to face as shri ramakrishna's mother chandramani devi could see gods and goddesses face to face as shri ramakrishna's father chudiram chattopadhyay could see god face to face so these are the shining examples to impress upon us that this is not a story this is not a fiction it is a reality which could be achieved by every one of us it only shows that we will have to have definite attitude towards god and we must practice spirituality every day even if you are sick 
you must not stop doing spiritual sadhana that's it so lord sri ramakrishna tells important five attitudes that we should cherish in our heart one is shanta the serene attitude between the aspirant and god one pointed devotion not to be deviated by any circumstances or surroundings or any other factors is deeply established in that attitude the rishis of olden times had that attitude of shanta serenity extremely serene they were they never desired to have any kind of worldly pleasures if the mind desires any worldly pleasures it means that it is dragging down us far away from god let us not become duped these pleasures are simply attractions to deviate the mind from going towards god to deviate you rising from human level to the divine level let us not be cheated by these attractions of worldly pleasures they degrade your body they degrade your mind they degrade all that is beauty that is in you they degrade all your glory they destroy you completely man becomes animal becomes brute by resorting to worldly pleasures let us admit this let us face these things boldly without any fear why should we fear fear for what fear should be afraid of yourself that should be your attitude no fear can stand i am the embodiment of strength strength is my life strength is my breath strength is my everything strength is my god god is my strength let us cherish that attitude let us devote some time every day morning and evening for meditation on the divine lord when we meditate on him let us be very conscious of what we are meditating upon let us not be shaken by all dirty thoughts that might come up come up in the course of our meditation so if you have that calmness steadiness then you will see the light of god then you will be endowed with the experience of bliss the same shanta attitude can be seen in the chaste wife of a husband she has that attitude serene attitude in fact the wife is a perfect model as shri ramakrishna says she has all these attitudes shanta dasya sakya vatsalya 
Madhura. All these attitudes are fully manifested in the chaste wife. That is remarkable. So, the husband is everything to the wife. She thinks of him as the embodiment of beauty and love. Her whole being is identified 100% with the husband. But that pure love has been degenerated now, nowadays. They think husband and wife means just to have a kind of sexual enjoyment. Is it just that? No. Sri Ramakrishna and Shardamani Devi model husband and model wife. How they loved each other. How they were one. Holy Mother would say there is no difference between myself and Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna would say who is Holy Mother? Nothing but myself. So two in one, one in two. It's a remarkable attitude that we should try to understand properly. Secondly, the attitude of dasya, the attitude of a servant towards his master. He obeys the master and he serves him with all devotion, with all love. We have the example of Hanuman, Anjaneya, Pavanaputra. His attitudes toward attitude towards Sri Ramachandra. Where do you find like Hanuman in the whole world? He was ready to serve him. He felt the strength of a lion when he worked for Sri Ramachandra. And when he thought of Sri Rama, when he began to serve him, it was so enthralling, it was so inspired. He was completely occupied with the thought of Sri Ramachandra. The wife also has this attitude towards her husband. She also serves her husband lovingly, affectionately. That's it. So to cultivate this real love, pure love and pure devotion, these are the ways of expressing that love and devotion. How you serve, how you act upon, how you talk, how you behave. In every action it is tested. Yashoda and Krishna. What a fine example. How the mother serves the child. Simply even to think of it is thrilling experience. How wholeheartedly the mother serves the child. That serving with full devotion, with full love. That's the point we should remember. The third attitude is Sakya, friendship. It's remarkable. You can have this attitude towards God. If you consider God as your own friend, you will not have any fear and 
it's a great joy to have a friend like god arjun developed this friendly attitude towards lord krishna how he could sit with shri krishna freely how he could talk to him freely and as a result of which how he got the message of gita how his whole life was transformed that's it then watsalya how the mother loves the child then there comes the attitude of madhura the attitude of woman towards her lover radha and krishna how the love reached the climax it has crossed the sensuality pure love it is love of communion with atman with atman jivatman and parmatman becoming one the wife also has this attitude towards her husband master mahashe asked a question to shri ramakrishna in the course of his talks whether god could be seen with this eyes with this ordinary eyes can he be seen shri ramakrishna tells no if you have to see god is going on creation preservation destruction just like wave ocean and the waves the waves are rushing dashing on the shore full of turmoil at the same time it is deep and serene in the same way the whole creation with all its multifarious activities how people are being born how they are crying how they are shouting how they are enjoying the whole thing whole drama whole drama arjun is seeing shri krishna gave him special eyes to have this vision he could see the future events how all these kauravas are being killed everything is going on you fool you think you are doing everything is done by god everything is done according to the will of god thinking that do thy duty that's it you are not to judge anything you are only to perform thy duty by doing thy duty you will be transcending this realm of maya and you will be blessed with the vision of god so shri ramakrishna tells you will develop special eyes special ears special body all your organs become special before you realize god in order to have it you can't simply have it by just thinking of it you may think i want to become a king can you become overnight king you must work for it there are so many other things to be attended to so here sri ramakrishna stresses the importance of spiritual discipline without discipline why do you talk why do you talk 
many people think talking is spirituality i have seen many people gone talking morning to night talking 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 nothing final result is zero talking is not spirituality it is doing something positively yourself sit down close your eyes sit erect think deeply on the divine thought repeat divine name constantly do it for 12 years try to maintain purity in life purity in words purity in action try to be honest do practice all these values then you will know what spirituality is till then it's only just like writing on a paper type it out and read it that's all spirituality is intensely practical that's why shri ramakrishna says religion is intensely practical don't talk the less you talk the more you are religious the less you talk the more you are spiritual the more you talk the less you are spiritual that's it let us understand the truth as it is then you will enjoy the beauty of it so shri ramakrishna has dealt with all these attitudes if one can have this any one of these attitude he can realize god that's what shri ramakrishna tells by thinking of the lord all the time one does not lose consciousness on the other hand one becomes god now people are many times confronted with doubts and doubts doubts and doubts Sri Ramakrishna tells, "It is through God's grace that you understand. The doubts of the mind will not disappear without His grace. Doubts do not disappear without self-realization. People may answer your questions. As soon as the answer is just completed, another question raises its head. When that is answered, yet another question raises its head." so it doesn't mean that you should not doubt it you may have some questions that's a different matter what i mean to say is we must put a full stop somewhere doubts they do they are also a kind of obstruction on our way shri ramakrishna said like this let me believe it and do it practice all these doubts etc Sri Ramakrishna himself will take care of them. Why should I bother about them? You must have that kind of attitude. One need not fear anything if one has received the grace of God. He gives the example of the father and the child. If the father holds the hand of the child, the child does not stumble. But if the child holds the hand of the father he may fear he may stumble any time a man does not have to suffer any more if god in his grace removes his doubts and reveals himself to him but this grace descends upon him only after he has prayed to god with intense yearning of heart and practiced spiritual discipline the mother feels compassion for her child when she sees him running about breathlessly she has been hiding herself now she appears before the child i think we have read up to this point now i shall read the few passages then i shall hear about your 
comments. But why should God make us run about? Thatyam, page 116. Immediately Sri Ramakrishna said, It is His will that we should run about a little. Then it, has, it is great fun. God has created the world in play, as it were. This is called Mahamaya, the great illusion. Therefore, one must take the refuge in the Divine Mother, the cosmic power itself. It is she who has bound us with the shackles of illusion. The realization of God is possible only when those shackles are severed. The Master continued, One must propitiate the Divine Mother, the primal energy, in order to obtain God's grace. God Himself is Mahamaya, who deludes the world with our illusion and conjures up the magic of creation, preservation and destruction. She has spread this veil of ignorance before our eyes. We can go into the inner chamber only when she lets us pass through the door. Living outside, we see only outer objects, but not the eternal being, existence, knowledge, bliss, absolute. Therefore, it is stated in the Purana that the deities like Brahma praised Mahamaya for the destruction of the demons Madhu and Kaitava. Shakti alone is the root of the universe. That primal energy has two aspects, Vidya and Avidya. Avidya deludes. Avidya conjures up woman and gold, which cast the spell. Vidya begets devotion, kindness, wisdom and love, which lead one to God. This Avidya must be propitiated and that is the purpose of the rites of Shakti worship. The devotee assumes various attitudes to Shakti in order to propitiate her. The attitude of a handmaid, a hero or a child. A hero's attitude is to please her even as a man pleases a woman through intercourse. The worship of Shakti is extremely difficult. It is not joke. I pass two years as a handmaid and companion of the Divine Mother, but my natural attitude has always been that of a child towards its mother. I regard the breasts of any woman as those of my own mother. Women are, all of them, the veritable images of Shakti. In Northwest India, the bride holds a knife in her hand at the time of marriage. In Bengal, a nut cutter. The meaning is that the bridegroom, with the help of the bride, who is the embodiment of the divine power, will sever the bondage of illusion. This is the heroic attitude. I never worshipped the Divine Mother that way. My attitude toward her is that of a child towards its mother. The bride is a very embodiment of Shakti. Haven't you noticed at the marriage ceremony how the groom sits behind like an idiot but the bride, <laughs> she is so bold. After attaining God, one forgets his external splendor, the glories of his creation. One doesn't think of God's glories after one has seen him. The devotee, once immersed in God's bliss, doesn't calculate anymore about outer things. When I see Narendra, I don't need to ask him, what's your name? Where do you live? Where is the time for such questions? Once a man asked Hanuman which day of the fortnight it was. Brother, said Hanuman, I don't know anything of the day of the week or the fortnight or the position of the stars. I think of Rama alone. Let us stop here and continue next Tuesday. Any questions, doubts, comments or anything whatever you want to talk about, how you feel about the teachings of Sri Ramakrishna. There is no dogmatism here. No dogmatism, no trace of dogmatism. No trace. All open, no secret. 
the gates of spirituality are wide opened by Sri Ramakrishna. Come on! Are you ready? That's what Sri Ramakrishna means. If you are not ready, let us become ready. So going to God is going to heaven. Clinging on, clinging on to the world means going to hell. So both heaven and hell are in your own hands. Enjoy whatever you want. If you want to have the experience of hell, go on clinging on to the world. Have whatever you want. You will see how it causes pain, suffering, etc. It is possible if you develop a real a definite attitude for considerable length of time. Arjun had uh, that uh, friendship with Lord Krishna from the beginning to the end. Uh, all the Pandavas, all the time they were thinking of Krishna. Without Krishna, uh, they would not uh, be peaceful at all. When uh, Duryodhan went to Dwaraka, you know that story that uh, the compromise uh, deal failed. Lord Krishna went to the court of Duryodhan to compromise in order to avoid the war that might occur between Kauravas and Pandavas. But it couldn't uh, work out because the Kauravas, the Duryodhan, he was very egoistic, boastful and wanted to enjoy everything himself, full of greed and etc. So finally the war has to be started. So just before the commencement of the war, Duryodhan went to see Krishna in Dwarkanath. Lord Krishna was there, Arjuna also went there to see. And Duryodhan uh, has gone there to take uh, his help in course of, in the, suppose the war occurs, he wanted Krishna to be on his side. So Duryodhana also had come, Arjuna also had come for the same purpose. Now here you can markedly find Lord Krishna, he talked to Duryodhana. Look Duryodhana, here is a huge army. Lord Krishna also had a big army, Yadavas, very big army, all heroes. Each one was a hero. Huge army. Do you want this whole army? Because war means it requires a lot of people to fight. If you want me, you see, I don't fight in the war. I don't use any weapon. It is for you to choose. If you want the whole army, the whole army will be given to you. If you want me, of course I will be with you. But I don't take any arms, just I will be with you, that's all. Duryodhana was very happy to hear Krishna offering such a huge army. Army is very important, without army how can you fight? Why should I need Krishna? He is not uh, holding any arms and he doesn't want to fight. So instead of having Krishna, let me have the army. So he preferred army. When Arjun was asked, Arjun said, Lord, I want you, not the army. If you are on my side, then everything is okay. So he had that firm faith and belief in Sri Krishna. It is that faith and love that saved them. And Duryodhana was completely destroyed because of his evil propensities. So if we develop that love and devotion and faith towards God, we do have visions of God. Why not? But we must have that pure purity in the mind that is important because God is purity itself. So we must become pure enough to have the vision of God. That's the point. That purity is achieved only through spiritual discipline. There is no easy method, no occult power there. Somebody coming and touching your head and you are transformed immediately. God doesn't want that way. Actually, there is a story, remarkable story. In the beginning of the creation, 
because in a definite plan according to definite plan everything is created so there are different uh, officers assigned with the particular jobs to be done they are called prajapati brahma he was creating certain species certain types of human beings well they are created they are born but just then this narada maharshi a divine sage a very compassionate sage if you read narada bhakti sutra you will see how how great he is he was full of love and he was full of god within himself there is nothing but god he felt pity when those were created he immediately rushed to them rushed to them out of compassion and he was initiating all those people look don't be deluded by this world take this mantra make your life fulfilled because their mind was pure they were not tainted by any kind of worldliness they are just born and the rishi is giving the mantra immediately they went to forest and did tapas and realized the supreme god and the prajapati brahma became very anxious what happened where are the people whom i created gone then again he began to create another set second set also met with same fate narada went and he, so when he did repeatedly two three times then prajapati called narada and said look why are you doing like this if you hinder like this how the play of uh, the creation would go so this moment onwards you will not stay in a particular place for a long time so like that the story goes the point is what i mean to say we have to develop that purity we have to cultivate that purity whatever way you want to do it you do it once that is established then nothing to fear then nobody can delude you anymore but spiritual discipline is necessary no occultism no god doesn't want that way if god wants that way he can simply t- transform the whole uh, this earth into heaven why not has no power to do that he has that power yoga what is yoga sadhan you see if you don't if you are not aspiring for the enjoyment any kind of enjoyment that comes in the way of your vision of god that should be avoided that should be rejected mercilessly true all right all right if you pray if you pray for worldly prospects for worldly prosperity it will be granted no doubt by the gods but no no what i mean to say by miracle by miracle occultism what i meant was through some mysterious power you want everything to be done without any self effort on your part towards reaching that stage you want everything to be done simply want to become emperor it should be done instantly it can't happen like that that's what i mean to say so if you aspire for worldly prosperity worldly prosperity is given no doubt it is given but it is not given simply the worldly prosperity is always mixed with sorrow suffering all sorts of things are always connected with that if you want divine prosperity that also will be given that's what mother kali divine mother kali in her blissful form she asked vivekananda what do you want my my child you have come what do you want he could have asked for i want to become a millionaire he could have asked simply it would have been granted because she just asked the question what do you want but what did he say i want jnana bhakti viveka vairagya that is the purity of mind he didn't aspire anything else that's it he could have become emperor no doubt mother is telling ask whatever you want finished no condition is there but because of his purity of mind he could see the vision of mother because of his purity of mind shri ramakrishna could show him divine mother suppose he had not attained that purity he would not have seen the mother 
So what is purity means? Purity means his mind doesn't aspire anything of the world. It wants God and God alone. After attaining God, how Swami Vivekananda worked for the whole humanity out of his infinite love. Because he could see God in every being. That's why he would say, Daridra Devo Bhava, Papi Devo Bhava, Dalita Devo Bhava. All these are gods. Serve them. That's what Swamiji said. He literally saw. Because the whole creation is full of God consciousness. So, if you realize God and then work in the world, you are not caught in the net of worldliness, but at the same time, you will be helping all the people to rise from the lower level to higher level. That's it. Oh, it is a, right. referring to Buddhist philosophy. No, the point is, they are all uh, very general terms. They use them in various contexts. For example, moksha. To give the example, moksha means liberation. Liberation from what? That's important. If you want to liberate from this world and want to, if you want to liberate from worldly enjoyment and want to have the celestial enjoyment, you will you will have the celestial enjoyment. But afterwards again you will come back. But that's also called liberation. That's also called as moksha. But moksha means there is called the final liberation, final freedom is called as Atyantika Mukti. Atyantika Mukti. That is a special term. Atyantika Mukti means final freedom. By getting, after getting that, you will have no more uh, to worry at all. Absolute freedom it is called as. Atyantika Mukti. That is a state of perfect peace and bliss. It's a very enjoyable state. But that state one will reach only when he transcends this uh, uh, worldly type of joy and other things. Mm. Mm. Chant the name of the Lord and His glory unceasingly that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quench that mighty forest fire, worldly lust, raging furiously within. O name, stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart opening its cup to knowledge of thyself. O self, drown deep in the waves of his bliss, tasting his nectar at every step, bathing in his name, that bath for weary souls. Various are thy names, O Lord, in each and every name thy power resides. No times are set, no rites are needful for chanting of thy name. So vast is thy mercy, how huge then is my wretchedness, who find in this empty life and heart no devotion to thy name. O oh my mind, be humbler than a blade of grass, be patient and forbearing like a tree, take no honor to thyself, give honor to all, chant unceasingly the name of the Lord. O oh Lord and soul of the universe, mine is no prayer for wealth or retinue, the playthings of lust or the toys of fame as many times as I may be reborn. Grant me, O Lord, a steadfast love for Thee. A drowning man in this world's fearful ocean is Thy servant, O sweet one. In Thy mercy consider him as dust beneath Thy feet. O long for the day when an instant's separation from Thee, O Lord, will be as a thousand years. When my heart burns away with its desire, and the world without Thee is as heartless why. Prostrate at Thy feet let me be in unwavering devotion, neither imploring the embrace of Thine arms, nor bewailing the withdrawal of Thy presence. Though it tears my soul asunder, O Thou who stealest the hearts of Thy devotees, do with me what Thou wilt, for Thou art my heart's beloved, Thou and Thou alone. O Lord, Lead us from the unreal to the real, lead us from darkness to light, and lead us from death to immortality. May all be free from dangers, may all realize what is good, may all be actuated by noble thoughts, may all rejoice everywhere. May all be happy, may all be free from disease, may all realize what is good, may none be subject to misery. 
May they become virtuous. May the virtuous attain tranquility. May the tranquil be free from bonds. May the freed make others free. May good betide all people. May the sovereign righteously rule the earth. May all beings ever attain what is good. May the worlds be prosperous and happy. May the clouds pour rain in time. May the earth be blessed with crops. May all countries be free from calamity. May holy men live without fear. May the Lord, the destroyer of sins, the presiding deity of all sacred works be satisfied. For he being pleased, the whole universe becomes pleased. He being satisfied, the whole universe feels satisfied.